well a while back uh, President Trump made a very controversial statement about uh, quote unquote um, dreamers from shithole countries coming across the United States to do immigration and now the South African uh, government is asking President Trump to take all the South African farmers there because South Africa have decided they um, no longer want uh, white farmers they'd rather have black farmers um, so, and so I believe that uh, Zimbabwe and other countries in Africa uh, and yet now they're welcoming uh, white farmers back to some of these countries because um, well the black farmers just aren't doing the jobs sorry to be racist but you know when there is racism in a country you, you got to view what happens in these countries uh, are they capable of um, producing food themselves are they capable of um, passing policies without being violent without being um, you know without showing lack of control uh, I can see definitely the, the, the water quality in a lot of countries even the states these days even a lot of parts in Europe I'm not, I'm not suggesting it's just third world countries but you know I've stayed in these third world countries before and a lot of uh, the water that they get uh, a, a, lot, a lot of them are from Asian countries that come across and produce filtered water or use chemicals to to clean water and the ones with the chemicals in it are really sort of dangerous um, oftentimes when someone digs a well that you throw down uh, chlorine tablets to sort of um, kill some bacteria in the water but it's not the best way uh, and it does eventually you know any chemicals whatsoever does eventually affect a person and there is a high rise in autism a very very high rise in autism which we've not really looked at but let's look at the psychological conditions that follows you know the characteristics of having autism poor social skills now this is just uh, you know the South African Parliament the past year or two here's Zuma here uh, here is um, an ANC member just throwing up the sort of he he does the sort of right hand salute quite a lot. Of you know, we've seen the uh, Anthony Joshua do it quite a lot in the ring, and he's already stated that you know the uh, master race is the the black African. Um, Anthony Joshua has already stated that. Um, so we're getting a lot of disruption in the world. Um, South Africa, a lot of dis disruption. They've decided they don't want the white farmers. So that's a sort of a lack of empathy. I would have said it's racism, but it's a lack of empathy um, of these families who have been working the land for a number of years. Um, I've stayed in a number of countries in Africa. All the people that I know um, have either bought the land um, or been given land. Uh, the major banks in Africa when some of the Europeans came in it wasn't not really Europeans we're talking about pharaohs we're talking about the super elite that came into these countries and says yeah we'd like to open a bank as soon as you mention money of course free land free land for the bankers in Africa but as for missionaries as for real real people farmers the majority of them had to buy their land um, and that's documented but in South Africa they're saying that the whites came and raped and pillaged the land which is not true yes there was wars um, against the British there was wars against factions um, as the Europeans came in and tried to um, take lands for themselves the British were involved in it the Dutch were involved in it um, Germans and so on or, and the French the Portuguese were particularly cruel I think um, 
so are the British, um, having a, a history in South Africa, especially, you know, during the Boer Wars, they were particularly bad. They, I think they were the first ones to open concentration camps, so I realise there's been a terrible um, loss of life and suffering um, in South Africa, especially. Um, and I guess they want their lands back, but look, look, look what's, what's happened to the other countries in Africa that um, have really done that. And I, I just think personally, the mentality of Africans is uh, the statement that uh, the ANC made recently was that just literally walk onto a piece of land and claim it for yourself. How do you think that's going to work out? Seriously, can you imagine? Can you imagine that, like President Trump just announcing, um, yeah, just walk on to a farmer's piece of land and just claim it for yourself. Just think of the amount of people that would be out claiming the land. Just think of the amount of violence that uh, they'd be doing while claiming the land for themselves. Oh, I was here first. No, this is mine. No, this is my fam family ancestry land. And there'll just be fights, you know? There's no program, there's no order within the South African Parliament. They're just fighting among themselves, just opening their mouth and saying anything, really. And I believe it, it's, it's having autistic traits. I don't know if it's the water or whatever it is, but... <sighs> Active but odd in interactions, lack of impulse control, obsessive interests, constant need of stimulation. If you said Asperger's syndrome or another ASD, you would be right. And these are mental conditions, but I think, I just somehow think they're caused by chemicals, mostly. Um, if you said they are signs of psychopathy, you'd be also right. It is about time that the taboo of discussing psychopathy in the same sentence as autism is dropped. It doesn't. Uh, it does seem to be the elephant in in the room. There's a lot of elephants in the room, but this this is another one. It was very much hushed up when it was brought up in discussion of Adam Lanza, but they do share many characteristics. Um, I think some people hold the fear that if it, this was openly discussed then everyone on the AS would be viewed with suspicion. But that is very naive. To accept that psychopaths may lie on the spectrum does not mean everyone on the spectrum is psychopaths or that they cannot be distinguished. I just think there's certain ingredients that make up psychopaths. And um, racism is one. Having a spirit of... Uh, well, being a, being an antichrist spirit, if they, if they don't believe in the gospel, that's another ingredient. Um, you know, not burying the hatchet for past sins, you know, against uh, your own people, that's another ingredient. You know, because you you constantly are thinking about revenge, constantly thinking about how can I take back what is mine. When it's not, it wasn't yours in the first place. So that's called coveting. Yeah. If any families have a right to the lands which uh, the South African white farmers have, why don't they look up? My suggestion would be, rather than all this stuff going on, like autistic stuff happening, why don't they look up the actual original ancestors uh, within the parts of these lands? and just offer it to the families who used to stay there. If they don't have these records, then no one has a claim to that land. If the government wants to use that land for farming, then they got to have black farmers who are qualified to work the land. Okay? If they don't have that, then it's going to cause um, mass starvation. 
is going to cause a lot of war right into the future because for example if the land is given to a black South African family who don't have a clue what they're doing let's say they, they, they buy the land and they start growing uh, drugs they, st they start growing weed they start growing basically uh, I don't know poppies whatever opium so they start using it for for drugs so the government's going to have an even bigger problem in their hands because you're going to have drug dealers using that land um, to to you know to sell drugs and um, they're going to have a an even bigger problem than they have now um, unless they have qualified people who can work that land or the government has plans for that certain land maybe maybe they want to use as far as I understand there's about 70 odd percent left of the white farmers land it used to be about 85 percent so let's say for example over the next year they decide well we'll take 10 percent of this land we're going to take this this and this and they make the white farmers aware uh, we'd like to seize your land uh, you have the option of leaving or you have the option of working for the black farmers that we're going to replace you with you can work for them just as the blacks worked for you you can now work for the blacks wouldn't that be fairer and therefore maybe the white farmers could advise them about how to do their job if, if they don't have experience in farming because it's not a walk in the park farming uh, a lot of black people think that farming is just such a great thing and uh, you know it just brings in a lot of money and um, they're just they're just doing it for the money it's, it's a lifestyle it's a way of life farming um, if you're not prepared to get up at 4 a.m. and work the land uh, look after the animals feed the animals have a tea break back out there and basically work till about 4 a.m. till about 10 11 p.m. at night if you're not prepared to do that every day without a break because I, I personally know some farmers and that's their life it's not it's not like this glamorized lifestyle w which the blacks imagine where they're just uh, it's like a nine-to-five job and they, they come back and, and they have parties and all that stuff and loads of cars I mean farmers yeah I mean they, they, they'll make a living out of what they do you know they have to buy the, the, the equipment the machinery um, that type of thing but it's not really the lifestyle that they, they would imagine and you know recently you know I've seen a vision of that there is pagan gods being called upon by um, these black people um, most of them are not Christians especially the ones that are communist especially the ones that are in the ANC they're actually following satanic gods you know so a lot of these white farmers were given the land some of them I think most of them actually bought the land um, some of them may have been given the land because they, they were um, missionaries you see and they, they were teaching the gospel they were they were teaching uh, the indigenous people the word of God and some of these people were willing to, 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 to sort of work on that land while learning learning the scriptures basically and that's how a lot of churches started up in, in South Africa, there's a lot of missionaries visit, visited different parts of Africa but obviously the main problem is the nature of the, the Europeans going and immigrating into these lands that's the major problem for many South Africans but there's no um, sort of what would you say education there's no real plan and actually um, you know working the land there's no real plan in replacing the these white farmers with people who are capable of continuing to do the job that they have been doing and as far as I gather, 
the job that they have been doing is is literally a job that the government hasn't been supporting for you know since the apartheid was dropped about 20 years ago and a lot of these farmers have been living in very very um, poor conditions very poor conditions somehow um, looking after the land somehow even through droughts and famines still somehow producing um, on the land you know that uh, the government has really neglected for the past 20 years so I don't know how you know what what sort of financial plan the government has like when the black farmers come in and they try to do the same job are they going to have more resources to do the job are they going to um, have more water being produced to look after the land are they going to have the correct materials are they going to have the workers because because farmers have got to have workers in some cases that the workers don't get paid very much because their their general job is just to um you know build fences look after certain parts do weeding and so on very very mundane jobs you know they're not exactly very glamorous jobs but how can you pay somebody you know 500 quid a, a week to uh, do weeding or to you know build build fences you, you just can't afford that um, realistically you know living in the real world these guys the, these communists don't live in the real world <laughs> they've got some sort of um, some sort of psychology psychopathic psychology where they think that well you just kick out these um, white people and everything will be fine well many black leaders in Africa have had the same thought I think the majority of them has came back on them and uh, they've had no plan to actually continue the work that's, that's, that these people have struggled to do for the past uh, 20 years under terrible conditions, under very racist conditions and so the theme of the ANC seems to be what's mine is mine and what's yours is mine that's communism what's mine is mine and what's yours is mine um, that's not acceptable it's just not acceptable so anyhow let's, let's pray for these um, white farmers in South Africa let's continue to pray for them continue to pray for the situation continue um, to hope hope that uh, maybe the Holy Spirit begins to minister to these um, autistic people in the South African Parliament that really just don't have a clue how to run a nation how to lead a nation they're all emotionalist and racist that's all they are, they're like basically women um, offended women, that's how they're acting you know